Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to Dr. Jet Laboratories. Today, we're coming to you from the mess hall, uh, mainly, mainly because the stink bug works is such a clutter, it would be a visual distraction. Uh, today, I'm talking about the systems and the challenge. Um, as far as the system goes, I got a little head the other day. <laughs> In fact, I got a little head twice <laughs> the other day. And um, interestingly enough, it's the same color red as the American spirit. Why? What a coincidence. And his little windscreen is going to have the same blue as the American Spirit canopy. And if I can find a small enough tip for one of my airbrushes, I might even be able to put a touch of gold around him before I do the black uh, outline of his, his uh, windscreen. So they're coming along. First part of the the systems that's received its final color. These, the more I think about it, the more I'm just going to let you guys do anything you want with these. Oliver sells these drive units. They're not expensive. If you get several at a whack, you can save shipping. I did, in fact, buy several out of wax. See, here, here's a couple right now. So if you want one of these things, you want to get involved in the challenge, let me know if you don't, don't want to order it from Germany, and I'll get you one of mine. The systems, the systems, I am rigging up the pull-pull arrangement using fishing line. I thought that would be kind of a fun little trick. So I'm using um, a ball bearing swivel here. And what I've done is take wire fishing leader, you know, put it around here, swage it, and put some shrink tube on it to make it look pretty. Um, and then this is 1 16th stainless steel um, capillary tube. And it makes a good watertight seal with this 332nd tube. You just grease this sucker up and no water's going to get through there. I mean, you could probably put this in a submarine and take it down 20, 30 feet before water would start blowing in there. So it's all good. There is one problem with, with this system and it's, it's right here at the very end. I'm using these kind of servo connectors, these clevis couplers, and the problem is, while they work real good, they squash the ends of it and make it hard to get them back in here. This one's already been squashed, and I'm going to have to work on it with a file and such to get it back in there. So... I may replace these these end connectors. I don't know if you can see them. I may replace these end connectors just because of the way they work. You know, and I, I would really like to have something that would clamp down on the cable in a V block or something, but it's just not the case. And it it has to be able to fit through this hole because if I were to put a loop and a swage and it, it wouldn't go through there. Lastly is, this is just fishing leader. You know, it's disposable. If I destroy this end, I can just heat it up, pop it off, stick another one on and call it good. So um, until I can find something better here, that's the way we'll do it. Or let's face it, these are replaceable. I could just snip it off here and make another one with with little or no effort. The motor is in. I think I showed you that. I have the nice little ears here. The motor is 
rock solid than <laughs> the motors <laughs> more solid than the, than the boat so uh you know this is old school design so they they put a lot of structure in here to stiffen up this don't forget flotation i was thinking of doing a uh, a depron boat this this is small enough and light enough you could make a depron boat and so i was fooling around with some some depron and i had a piece that fit the hatch so there you go now i have flotation in my hatch always a good thing to have and finally this sucker is 29 inches long in my book that's pretty darn big yet you know pro boat has the 42 inch cat and uh guys like mhz and and uh h&m uh, uh, &M, they're selling five foot five and a half foot rc boats they're huge i wouldn't have a place to work on them nonetheless store them nonetheless transport them so and then have a place to run them good grief if i lived on lake superior maybe i could run a five foot cat but uh i don't know any other freshwater bodies big enough anyhow i just thought i'd uh say hi to you this morning ramble a little bit show you where i'm at and uh until next time, jet out. Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to the Stink Bug Works, the southern wing of said Stink Bug Works, for a special double feature today. I straightened up some, not all, I straightened up some of the crap here on my bench, and lo and behold... I found the next project. Now this, you know, I was bitching earlier this morning about uh, how big some of these things are getting. This, this is my size. This is perfect. This is way cool. Now, let me tell you a couple of things I've noticed about this haul. Let's take all the stuff out. I showed you this haul a while back and I talked about the fact that hello oh, the drive line it can stay in there. The hull is asymmetric. If you notice the cowl is offset to the left just like the full size boats that turn left. And then, hey, it is time for this to come out. Well, maybe not. Then I noticed the sponsons were slightly different. You notice the ride pad on this side is a little closer, and the ride pad on this side is a little further out. And if you look, the one that's further out has more dead rise. And originally I was thinking, oh, offset to the left, asymmetric sponsons it's set up to turn left well then i got to thinking about these asymmetric sponsons <sighs> when you're going around a turn the whole boat kind of wants to lean a little bit with the turn so i would think you would want more dead rise on the outside sponson to keep it from, you know, tucking and the like. And the inside sponson, it can be nearly dead flat because, you know, it's not supporting nearly as much as this guy. Well, when you look at it, the one here with more dead rise would mean the boat's turning to the right, which is normal for an RC. So... At first, I was going to set this boat up to turn left, but now that I study these sponsons a little closer, I'm going to set it up to turn right. 
Now, what am I going to do for a setup on this? I'm going to do... I'm going to put big B power (laughs) in this sucker. Now, this is a little 17-inch boat. This is on the order of my little Atlas and short circuit kits. This is about the same size. And so this was the motor that was in my Dona Outrigger, the one where it just hauled butt but required too big of a prop to uh, be efficient. Well, I can run a smaller prop on this and let this motor spin up a little bit more, gain some efficiency, and still have way more power than I need. So I'll I'll run, uh, what do I have here? Uh, a .130 cable with an eighth inch drive. I'll run the ubiquitous strut with the other rudder. I, I swapped rudders out. I like this rudder better because of where the pivot point is. It pivots or, or where the uh, push rod arm is. It's on the center line of the pivot. That way you get even throw left and right. And I, you can trim up the rudder. You can replace the rudder. You can put in a piece of carbon fiber and make your own rudder. So that's not an issue. I'm more concerned with the bracket. This boat... Now, remember, I I complained about the other MHZ haul. This thing's big sister. Um, Complained that it wasn't very scale. This is much closer to scale to the uh, Budweiser T3 haul. So I think I'll do this up as the T3. And the T3 was the one that was just all red and had white lettering with a uh, black shadow on it. it said Budweiser, Budweiser, Bud, you know, the, the, whole, <laughs> the whole thing. So there you go. That's my plan for that, the next project. So uh, the build sequence will go like this. We'll build it, run it, strip it, paint it. Until next time, jet out. <laughs>